Our first reading this morning is Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I have called, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Song responsibly by whole verse, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord your God, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord the and, and in the temple 
handle the Lord all our high glory. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. And the second reading is Acts chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Even twins are different, aren't you? 
Twins aren't exactly the same. Us guys will look at twins and we'll say, wait, which one are you? No one's ever said that to you, have they? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> all of us are so different. We're just all so different. And we're kind of like these crayons. Here's all these different kind of crayons in there. And I don't know which crayon I like the best. Orange is my favorite color, but I like all the other colors that are in here. I like all the other crayons. And I love the colors. Do you like the colors? It says, God tells us he doesn't love one person more than another person. He said he loves us all the same. And it's just like if these were all the people of the world, all sorts of different colors, all sorts of shapes and sizes, all sorts of different things about them. God says I love each and every one of them exactly the same. Just as he loves us, each and every one of us exactly the same. Isn't that cool? I think it's way cool. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about this morning. Well, I know the smell of crayon. I look forward to getting home and doing some coloring of my own. Remember, he loves us all exactly the same. It's way cool. Make sure you get the bulletin, okay? We'll see you guys next week.
know the old joke about a penguin, a penguin who had a brother, and his brother went missing. He finally went to the police station to report his brother being missing, and the police officer said, uh, okay, he said, we'll go looking for him. Uh, what did he look like? That's the whole joke. <laughs> right, penguin. There's a Jewish rabbi and Catholic priest who attended the same Fourth of July picnic, and the priest said, you know, uh, this baked ham is really delicious. You really ought to try it. I mean, I know it's against your religion to eat it, but you don't know what you're missing. And the rabbi smiled and he said, I'll tell you what, I'll have some at your wedding. <laughs> We're not the same, and yet we're exactly the same. Isn't that strange how that works? Each and every one of us here this morning, we're not the same at all, and yet we're exactly the same in so many ways. God shows no partialities, no favorites, it tells us. In Scripture, we are all in need, we are all beggars. Or as I say, we're all goofballs. Each and every one of us. And though our needs take different shapes at different times, we are all the same. No one has their act together in this life. No one knows what they're doing all the time in this life. No one is a realist in this life. We all have a limited understanding, and we all struggle in the dark a whole lot more than what we want to admit. That's why God shows no partiality. Jesus is there for all of us, whether or not we know that we need him. We all have our favorite colors, of course, our favorite TV programs, our favorite radio stations, our favorite sports teams, whatever it is. There's lots of partiality that we have. We have tons and tons of partiality. You enjoy being around some people, you don't enjoy being around others. All sorts of different partiality. You put up with things from some people that you like. If you like someone, did you ever know that you do this? Think about it. Someone that you really like a lot, you'll put up with so much stuff from that person. Someone you don't like, you don't put up with anything. And that's how we tend to work as people. Our patient level changes. You will watch a game go into overtime really want to see the game, you'll stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning watching it, even though you have to get up early in the morning. Waiting for an hour at your favorite restaurant, if you have to do that. But the service better be done on time, you know what I'm telling you? <laughs> That's how we are. We are these lying drawers. Jesus came out of the waters of his baptism. And he was ready to serve. He was ready, right off the bat. Here's my routine. I wake up in the morning, I kind of catnap, I wake up again, I catnap again, I wake up and catnap. I finally get up, I clear my throat, I do my bathroom chores, I shave, shower, I read the paper, drink my coffee, check and send emails, I watch a little bit of TV news and weather. And then I, off I go. And I'm still not ready. <clears throat> Jesus got all the waters of his baptism. And he was ready. Right off the bat. I am never totally presentable. This may be a shock to you, but I never am totally presentable. My uh, pants always need pulled up. My mom always yelled at my dad for that. And sure enough, I became my dad in that regard. So I said, pull your pants up, pull your pants up. My wife tells me all the time. My shirt tails are very often out. I'm very disheveled. All my ties are stained. I try to wash them, but I get the coffee on them all the time. My hair does what it does. I don't shave properly. There's always a little bit of hair I feel somewhere along the line. I keep a razor in my car, which is probably a dumb thing to do. Anyway. 
So I'm driving along, and I feel, oh, God, God, I missed that spot, so I'll get my little razor as I'm driving. I'm never totally ready and prepared. I don't know about you. The problems I need to deal with, I'm never totally prepared for that. The answers I should have, where I should be, admitting where I've been, being able to help. I maybe uh, told you the story before, but years ago, we interned in Indiana, and um, I got this call in the middle of the night. I was the, the pastor of the church. I was blessed enough to have my supervising pastor live about 30 miles away from me. Usually, you go to a large church when you intern, or a larger church, but I had the church all to myself, and my pastor uh, lived, like I said, about 30 miles away. Anyway, I got this call one night, and it was from a woman whose husband had been in a coma. He had kept her, he kept her, he, she kept him at home. Um, and a nurse would come in every day and look out at him. But he had been in his coma. And she called me up at night and she said, Leonard's awake and he wants to talk to you. And I was absolutely shocked. And, but it was in the middle of winter, it was December, very snowy December day, night, and I uh, left the house just a couple blocks away. I walked over and I remember uh, it being so cold and I was absolutely petrified of what in the world I was ever going to say to this guy. And um, a falling star came by, just like in the movies, you know, it really was a falling star, I just remember at that time, kind of calming down to me. But I walked in and I went over to Leonard and sat down next to him, he was laying on his bed. And he looked up at me, this uh, frail man, barely anything to him. And he looked up at me and he said, I'm having trouble dying. And I could have just melted right into the floor. I had no idea what to say. I started rambling about something or another, talking to him about different things, reading some scripture. I finally left. To this day, I can't remember what I said. I do know that the next day Leonard went back into that coma, of all things. Never know exactly what to say, where to be, how to go about things. All of us children. It was January 20th, 1930, when George V of England was going to broadcast a message for the first time. His voice would be heard, it never was heard before. But now it would be on radio. He was going to speak at the opening session of the London Arms Conference. In the United States, a few seconds before George V was going to speak, and of course back in this time everyone listened to the radio, so everyone was anxiously at, sitting there waiting to hear what he would say. But a few seconds before his speech, someone in the control room tripped a wire and broke it. There was a man by the name of Harold Vivian. He was the chief operator. You know what he did? He grabbed those wires and he forced them together. 250 volts of electricity went through his body. But he kind of held on until George had made the speech. I was thinking about that and how incredible that is to have done in the first place. But baptism is kind of like that connects us to God for a mission in the world. And it gives us a voice. Now flash ahead a few years later, it was 1936. Edward, his oldest son, became king. And Edward is the guy who ran away with Wallace, uh, Wallace Simpson. You know, he wound up giving up the throne. So the second eldest son came to the throne of England. His name is George VI. Are you all still with me? George VI was not prepared to take over as king, and he had very severe stuttering. It was the outbreak of World War II, and England needed a strong voice. Now, there was a man by the name of Lionel Rowe who was um, hired to help the king with his speech. They made a wonderful movie about this, in case you've never seen that, called The King's Speech. So Lowe tried to help him with his stuttering. At one point, they showed a film that uh, Lionel Rogue, Logue is, uh, went over and he sat in, on his throne. 
that the kings of England have all sat on before. And uh, George screamed out in his loud voice, what are you doing in there? Get out of that chair. And then Lionel had, had his leg draped over you know, the side of the arm of the chair. And he looked at him and he said, why should I listen to you? And George said, because I have a voice. And Lionel said, yes, you do. He just wanted him to use it. Now, George's speech was never perfect, even after that. Lionel was always there with him to try to help him with his stutter. He was there the rest of his life. But he had a voice. I am convinced that everyone needs to know that they matter. Everyone needs to know that they have a voice. That's a great deal of our problem in this world. Some people feel they have no voice, that they don't matter. We all have voices, and we all matter, and we all those voices should be heard. But here's the catch. Those voices should not be heard with our wonderful opinions and insights. Our opinions, our voices should be heard. Trying to speak the words of Jesus. Trying to live out the love of Jesus. A love that the world so desperately needs. We all have voices that can speak of that love. There was a priest, a minister, and a guru who were all together, and they were arguing about the best positions of prayer. We argue about all sorts of things in this world. Now nearby, there was a telephone repairman guy. He was up on a pole. But they were standing around down below, and the priest said, well, you should pray, you should kneel when you pray. That's the best position of prayer. The minister said, no, you should have your hands stretched up to heaven. That's the best position of prayer. And the guru said, no, you should lie on the floor. Now the repairman was taking all this in and he shouted down and he said, you know guys, the best praying I ever did happen when I was hanging upside down from the telephone pole. Almost fell to the ground. We are even partial to certain types of prayers. We even argue in churches in the world about prayers. People can be kicked out of their denomination because they actually pray for someone else. I find that to be astounding. Not good about lots of, I'm not good with lots of regulations and rules, uh, and maybe a little bit of a shock constitutions. I'm not good with all that stuff. I don't pay attention to them. The minister who follows me, by the way, is going to hate my guts of morning you right now. You're going to hear all sorts of things about him because we should be making a couple of questions to the Constitution. We'll do it soon. I shouldn't even have told you that, should I? But the National Church sends out these things. Make sure you change your Constitution with this whereas to be this whereas. Okay. We need to do that sometime. To be honest with you, I don't care. It doesn't matter that much to me. Maybe it should. I don't know. But I'll tell you why I don't care. It's not just because I don't like rules and regulations and constitutions and all that kind of stuff. It's because I think if we follow Jesus all the time, if we truly follow Christ all the time, we would have no need of any of them. No need of one single law in this world. I may be a naive person, but I think that that actually could be achieved. This world is jammed full of partialities. The have, the have-nots, those who understand, those who don't. Things that are easy for some people, things that are not easy for someone else. I guess I am most partial knowing this, that Jesus shows no partiality. The fact is, I am his. So are you. Amen.
offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the community of the baptized throughout the world and its leaders, that justice and forgiveness be proclaimed to all. Let us pray. For the beauty of creation, trees and animals, clean water, and favorable weather, that all creatures live abundantly on our fragile planet. Let us pray. Amen. For all of authority at the local, state, national, and international levels, that they rule with equity and sincerity of heart. For relief workers and those who support them, let us pray. Amen. For this congregation and all who have been washed in the waters of baptism, for those inquiring about the gift of baptism and life in Christ, and for those who are absent from this gathering, let us pray. Amen. In thanksgiving for those who have died in the faith, that the grace of Christ in their lives guide us in our vocation as Christians throughout the world. Let us pray. For the oppressed, the imprisoned, the sick, those living with HIV AIDS, for all who call out for help, including Terry Williams, Caitlin Doors, Deb Tiffany, and Ben Michaelis, Juanita Clausen, Susan Allen, Mary Luce Lebo, and Audrey Schrader, Donna Norton, Billy Miller, Stan and Eileen Maybe, Charlotte Longren, Melanie Simpson, Eleanor Engler, Eleanor Engler Jeannie Curtis, Roman Strome, Betsy Mix, C.A., Fred Close, Bill Winsman, Robert Klassman, and Josh Bevel. For Norma Strayer, Linda Lofts, David Debbie Meyer, Marlene Kreider, Brennan, Jeff Brown, and Tammy Porter. For Allie Grace Small, Carol Barron, Lucas King, and Dick Brown. Sarah Lenhart, Deb Shane, Andrew Williams, and Florence Forrest. For Chris Schmidtmeyer, Stephanie Nelson, Beth Jenny, Dick DeWeese, and Ted Pittenmeyer. For Irene Cordes, Lois Weekers, Jim Fruit, Alfred and Rita Priggy, Jordan James, Jeff Kiefer, and Brent Thompson. For Rudy and Ann Ravy, Kelly Darst, Naomi Rhodes, George and Cindy Pope, and Arlita Panning. For Kelly Troyer, Linda Hill, Bethany Wolf, Landon Zunk, and Paul Panning. J.P., Miranda Shane, Don Susan Gravis, and Alice Langenhoff. For Kate Michaelis, Crystal Garcia, Lorna Bosselman, Josh Badenhoff, and Sandy Bosselman. For Louisa Bevel, Shirley Myers Pages, and K.T., and Amy Allison. For Terry Dota, Lucy, Lucy Zwiebel, and Sandy Borselman. Benjamin Schwab, Barb Schufeld, Morg Grant, and Tammy Miller. Jamie Bosselman, Cass Bolton, Leota Pedraza, and Colleen Cable. For Kathleen Ward, Valerie, Bob and Esther Denny, Jackie and Dustin Brown. For Anna Long, Alex Overhouse, Lucas Rosebrook, Joshua Jenny, and Ken Buda. For Linda, Roma Brown, Paul Long, Larry Zackridge, and Mary Brown. For Paul Kuzno, Jeff Warner, Rudy Eikhoff, Pat Badenhoff, Marjorie Downs, Brent Leiter, Alexa Jennings, Emma Myers, and all those we name now in our hearts. That all who dwell on earth find comfort, peace, and redemption through Christ. Let us pray. Amen. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. Those people include Jacob Elling, Andrea Hoffman, Theo Hoyer, Randy Nation, Douglas Hoffman, Alfred Priggy, Ben Ruby, Braden Bajan, Barbara Gray, and Ben DeWitt. And we pray their anniversaries for Theo and Paula Hoyer, Andy and C.J. Wyrock, and Ken and Nancy Lang. We also pray for those serving in the military from this our congregation and this our country, including Mike Dimache, who is with the Oder, Tyler Hayes, Austin Oldberg, and Zach Bonner. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavy, heavenly grace. Radiant God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent. For the sake of the one who has made his dwelling among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us from your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.